In this video, we'll take a look at the best MMOs to play while waiting for New World to fix itself. Although New World was very popular during the first week of its launch, the game's player trends started going down in the succeeding weeks due to bugs and exploits that affected nearly everyone involved. These include things from disappearing equipment to an imbalanced and vulnerable economy that was made worse when Amazon Games accidentally gave away too much gold that resulted in a rollback and the trading post being shut down for days. While we're waiting for New World to bounce back and be the game we're expecting it to be, let's dive into other MMOs which have endured the test of time. MMOs are designed to be played with others on the same server. They involve cooperation and collaboration and are often seen as a way to socialize and meet people virtually. Although it isn't mandatory to do so, the experience is more often than not exciting when you join a guild and participate in group events, such as dungeons and raids. Most of the MMOs we'll be talking about fall under the MMORPG category, which includes classics as well as fairly new ones that have garnered a lot of attention for their unforgettable quest designs, interesting storylines, and distinctive combat mechanics. Not only are they sustainable, but they're also able to go above and beyond the expectations of the community. We'll be publishing a separate video of some MMOs you likely haven't heard of before very soon, but without further ado, let's discuss the best MMOs to play while waiting for New World to fix itself. Star Wars The Old Republic Star Wars The Old Republic is Bioware's first attempt at making an MMORPG. It's also the only MMO where you can fulfill your fantasy of being a powerful Jedi or Sith, since Star Wars Galaxies was shut down prior to the launch of Swotar in 2011. Star Wars The Old Republic played to Bioware's strengths and was a game that heavily relied on story and player choice that actually changed the flow of the narrative, which wasn't common for the genre at the time. These missions are not repeatable and all choices are permanent and can potentially affect how you experience the game. Of course, there are still many traditional MMO-styled quests called non-critical missions that do not directly relate to your character, but are essential for world building. Star Wars The Old Republic boasts a total of eight classes like the Jedi Knight, Jedi Consular, and Sith Warrior to name a few with options to specialize into advanced classes. Another feature about this game is that each class has a unique storyline. Every major character is also voiced, including the player character. True to Bioware, this MMO also features multiple and memorable companions that are unique to each class, fully customizable with extensive backgrounds, and some are even romance options themselves. On December 14th, 2021, which is just a week away, the eighth expansion known as Legacy of the Sith is planned to be released. Initially, it followed World of Warcraft's monthly subscription model, but when the player base started to decline, EA made the decision to convert it to a free-to-play model with an optional subscription method for additional perks. As such, you can try out Swotar for free on Steam. Guild Wars 2 In 2012, the sequel to the critically acclaimed Guild Wars by Arianet was released to the public. Guild Wars 2 was one of the earliest MMOs that tried to break away from WoW's static questing system. Instead of traditional quests where you would simply go from one NPC to the next, the game has touted dynamic events where players could participate and contribute. These events have objectives from deposing pesky wasp nests or collecting apples for hungry citizens to multi-stage missions where you defend cities, assault enemy bases, or repair villages altogether. What was unique for Guild Wars 2 at the time was that these missions would change depending on the map's state or if players succeeded or failed in the previous steps. For instance, failing to defend a town triggered a new goal later on in order to recapture said town. If you were successful, the follow-up quest involved going on the offensive to bring the fight to the enemy's doorstep. Unlike WoW and Final Fantasy XIV, Guild Wars 2 moved away from the holy trinity of MMOs. It does not have dedicated tanks, damage dealers, and healers. Instead, characters can fulfill multiple roles. Additionally, combat was much more active as players had the freedom to move around even while casting their spells. It was a very active system that encouraged movement and dodging. Guild Wars 2 has two expansions, namely Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire. In between major releases, there have been many content drops called The Living World, which has introduced new storylines as well as gradual changes to the world. A third expansion has also been announced for early 2022. This promises to bring in more subclasses, a new storyline, a combat mount such as a war turtle with a jetpack. What more could players want? Guild Wars 2's base game is free to play but with some restrictions. Having one of the expansions which costs $29.99 USD removes all free to play limitations. Although the game can be played on its own client, it will be released on Steam sometime in the near future. Final Fantasy XIV If WoW is an MMO with RPG systems, Final Fantasy XIV is an RPG with MMO systems. In Final Fantasy XIV, the narrative takes the center stage and it does so extremely well. While the early story beats of A Realm Reborn are somewhat repetitive and simple, it later on becomes a roller coaster of intrigue with multiple twists and turns and betrayals and murder. You'll also save the world in between. Some expansions, particularly Heaven's Word and Shadowbringers, are considered by many to contain the best stories in any MMO and even in all of gaming. But it didn't start out this way. When Final Fantasy XIV was initially released in 2010, it was met with substandard reviews as well as poor player reception. 
As a result, a remake was warranted to completely overhaul most of its gameplay mechanics, so in 2011, Square Enix started rebuilding and salvaging the title. Final Fantasy XIV was then re-released in 2013 under the moniker of A Realm Reborn, signaling the coming of version 2.0. This breathed a lot of new life into the game, essentially saving it. Final Fantasy XIV is unique in the sense that you can have and level up all professions on one character. The job system allows you to completely change your class by simply switching to a different weapon. This reduces the need to create alternative characters and redo early game quests you can always choose to move forward. Additionally, the game has a very generous trial period such that you can play A Realm Reborn together with the first expansion, Heaven's Word, up to level 60 for free. Although there are a few restrictions to prevent bots and others from abusing the system, it lets you experience the story, which is arguably the strongest part of the game. Final Fantasy XIV can be purchased on Steam and via Square Enix's website. Final Fantasy XIV is also available on Mac OS, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5. Endwalker, the latest expansion, releases today, but now is a great time to give it a go if you haven't already. Elder Scrolls Online Similar to Final Fantasy XIV, Elder Scrolls Online didn't start out as a beloved MMORPG. In fact, it had one of the worst launches back in 2014 due to multiple bugs and crashes as well as an outdated and mandatory subscription business model. What made this worse was their player base, which largely consisted of solo players who were hoping for experience the world similar to Skyrim. A year after the MMO's release, it was rebranded as the Elder Scrolls Online Tamriel Unlimited, resulting in largely positive reviews. Primarily, Zenimax removed the monthly subscription and made it optional in the form of ESO Plus for those who wanted additional inventory space for crafting items and for storage, among other privileges. It also opened its doors to massive exploration on top of skill line changes. Additionally, ESO became buy to play where buying the expansion once allowed you to play the entire content. Nowadays, you can expect to cycle through six classes composed of healers, tanks, and damage dealers, own and decorate your house, choose companions as you explore multiple regions together, engage in several PvP maps, and apply transmog to customize your outfits. ESO is an incredible MMO to get into if you're a longtime fan of the Elder Scrolls games as there are familiar references here and there, especially with the expansions. This is a non-linear, so you can choose which storylines to follow first. You're able to basically explore the majority of Tamriel with immense freedom since the mainline Elder Scrolls games only let you traverse single regions. However, if you're new to the game, then that's totally fine since you'll still enjoy its amazing and in-depth lore, group activities such as dungeons, trials, and world bosses, multi-layered crafting system, and a ton of free trials to experience the base game and the perks that come with ESO+. ESO is available on Steam, Mac OS, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and Google Stadia. On Steam, the standard edition, which includes the base game and the Morrowind chapter, costs $19.99 USD, whereas the Blackwood edition comprising the rest of the expansions costs $59.99 USD. Bless Unleashed Bless Unleashed, not to be confused with Bless Online, is an action MMO developed by Round 8 Studio. There is a confusion that Unleashed is a rebranded version of Bless Online, which was officially shut down in September 2019. This couldn't be farther from the truth, as it's a new game entirely, which has been built using the Unreal 4 engine. As such, it looks absolutely gorgeous and is perhaps one of the best-looking MMOs available. Landscapes, cities, and characters are beautifully rendered, and lighting effects are top-notch. Open-world areas can also support a large number of players that's especially fun to watch when everyone gangs up on world bosses. You're able to choose between five distinct classes like the Berserker, Crusader, and Mage to name some, and four races as you explore the land of Luminos. Note that classes are locked to specific races. Bless Unleashed doesn't look like what you'd expect from an MMO. The game has a rectical to select targets similar to third-person shooters. Combat is fast-paced and relies heavily on performing combo hits. When you chain together multiple attacks, you're able to deal greater damage. Combos can also get quite complex because a single skill can have one or two combo options, which have different effects. You also unlock more of these as you level up. Additionally, in order to customize your character further, you unlock blessings to provide you with unique buffs and more skills for combat or gathering purposes. Bless Unleashed is free to play with an optional microtransaction shop, various founder packs, and a premium battle pass. It's available on Steam, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. Black Desert Online Black Desert Online is an action MMORPG that was developed and published by Pearl Abyss back in 2015. A remastered version was released in August 2018, which included enhanced audio and visual elements. What's definitely the biggest hook in BDO is its extremely detailed character creator. You get a plethora of options to choose from, and you can mix and match features and even tweak even the smallest details of your characters. Because of this, you're able to truly tailor some beautiful or horrendous looking creations. Black Desert Online features a huge roster of classes. While they are gender-locked like in Lost Ark, you won't have a hard time finding something you enjoy playing. Of course, you have the basic classes such as the Warrior, Ranger, and Sorceress, but BDO also has exotic classes like the Musa, or a blade-wielding samurai type of class, 
the Lith, Lon, who dons a deadly blade pendulum, and the Corsair, a pirate who wields a blade and commands the seas in battle. Each class also has one or two advanced classes as they progress into later on. BDO is an action MMORPG that shies away from the tab-based targeting that Final Fantasy XIV and WoW are both known for. You are encouraged to move around freely, zipping around the battlefield with grace and brutality. Combat is quick and visceral and looks very flashy. It goes without saying that the rest of the game looks just as breathtaking because of the combat effects and its character creator. Black Desert Online is available on PC, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, iOS, and Android. You can purchase the game via Steam, and it starts at 10 USD. Mortal Online 2 At the time of its release in 2015, the first Mortal Online sandbox MMO relied on heavy skill progression as opposed to character levels, directional combat, and city building. However, it was mired with issues related to balancing and bugs. For the sequel, Star Vault AB has decided to expand the franchise even further by adding more skills, refining the crafting system, and improving PvE with Mortal Online 2. Both features and graphics have been enhanced thanks to the Unreal Engine 4. Mortal Online 2 is a difficult and complex MMO which prides itself on open and free-for-all PvP where equipment and skill mastery are equally significant. When you die, any player can easily swoop in to claim your loot. Similar to its predecessor, combat is multi-directional, so you need to be precise when it comes to moving your mouse in order to angle your blocks and attacks accordingly. This comes in handy when you're sieging or defending the castle you and your guildmates have built. Crafting is integrated with Mortal Online 2's lore so much so that the armor and weapons you make, since you'll be creating everything from scratch, will end up becoming stronger than before. There are more than a million possible combinations that require extensive testing and trial and error. Currently, you can enjoy early access via Steam for $39.99 USD with no monthly subscription, but the plan is to have a monthly subscription to continue playing after Mortal Online 2's launch, which is targeted for January 25th, 2021. As such, you can expect to enjoy the game without any microtransactions. And as I mentioned previously, we will be putting out a video very soon of MMOs that you may not have heard of in case you're looking for something brand new. What did you guys think of our list? Have you guys played any of these MMOs? What are you playing? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you